When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. What happens if you put hydrochloric acid, this is our hydrochloric acid, and sodium hydroxide, this is our sodium hydroxide. What happens if we put those two into solution? They're both strong acids and bases respectively. If we put them in solution, what will actually happen is we're going to have a salt forming, NaCl, that's our salt, sodium chloride, and we have water forming. And this is our, these are our two acids and bases, our hydrochloric acid and our sodium hydroxide. And what will happen is you're going to have the hydrogen of this one swim away because they will dissociate as soon as they hit water. And this one, the hydroxide will also be removed. And then what you have left is they come together to form water. And then we have our ions that come together to form our salt. Right? So here we have our water, which formed. That was this part of our product, which means this is neutral. There's no, it's not acidic or, or basic, it's neutral. And these two ions have no acidic or basic properties either. This will also be neutral. So now we have a neutral solution. The solution itself is neutral. There's no a pH of 7 this will be. And this happens if we have a strong acid coming together with a strong base. Now the reason why I'm going over this is because we're going to cover something a bit different. So it says identify a range of salts which form acidic, basic or neutral solutions and explain their acidic, neutral or basic nature. So the first one we just actually just covered the neutral one. We covered the neutral example. And that's if we have a strong acid and a strong base coming together. And they're both equally strong which means that you're going to have both of them dissociating to the same degree and you're going to have water being formed and no hydroxide. So if there were more hydroxide or more hydronium ions swimming around, it would either be basic or acidic. But in this case, they all came together to form water, so therefore it's neutral. And the other examples are examples where this is not the case. The first one, we're going to talk about a salt, which is actually a acidic salt. So, uh, sorry, the, the salt makes an acidic solution. So, this is an acidic salt, and what we mean by that is if you put these two together, the neutralization reaction between ammonia and hydrochloric acid, a strong, ace, a strong acid and a weak base, if they come together, they, the solution itself will not be neutral, it will actually be acidic. And this is the reason why. So, we've got our strong acid here, and the strong acid forms a very weak conjugate base. So this here, the chlorine ion, is a very weak conjugate base. Now the weak ammonia, weak base, which is ammonia, will form a conjugate acid, which in this case is called the ammonium ion. Now this is still weak, but it's a bit less weak than the chlorine ion. The chlorine ion is very weak. And what I mean by weak is if we have H2O, which we have in this equation, we've got H2O. And we have our chlorine ion on the one hand, and we have our nitrogen, uh, sorry, ammonium ion on the other hand. What I mean by weak is how likely it is for them to grab a hydrogen off, for it, for it to either. So in the case of a, a chlorine ion, because it's acting as a base, what it would have to do is it would have to grab a hydrogen and become HCl again. Right. So if it grabs a hydrogen off that water molecule it will become HCl again. So it will then go from Cl to HCl because it's grabbed that hydrogen off the water. And obviously the water itself will be missing a hydrogen and thereby it be a high, it would be a hydroxyl ion, right? So now we would have more hydroxyl ion in solution because the chlorine grabbed an extra hydrogen. But this doesn't actually happen. This doesn't happen. And if this were to happen, there would be more hydroxyl in solution, which means it would be more basic. But what happens is the opposite. Because I said earlier, the conjugate acid is a, is still weak, but it's stronger than the conjugate base. So what it means is that it's going to be much more likely to give away its hydrogen, which a, an acid would do. In this case, it's going to give away a hydrogen from the hydronium ion, and thereby it will become NH3 after it's given away its hydrogen. Right? So it's given away a hydrogen because it's the acid, thereby it's NH3. 
And what happens to water molecule if it gets an extra hydrogen? Well, it's going to turn into H3O plus because it's grabbed an extra hydrogen. And obviously that is acidic. So what that means is, I'll go over the equation. We had a strong acid and a weak base. But for the example we had beforehand, we had a strong acid and a strong base. And when they completely neutralized each other. And that would be, there were no, it was just a one way. So it just was, went to completion. There was no return. That, that the return equation didn't happen. It only goes to completion. Whereas in the case of a strong acid weak base, you can see it's a reversible reaction. So there's a reversible factor to this. And what that means is the majority of it will have formed water, chlorine ions, and ammonium ions. But actually some of it will return. Some of it will go back the other way. And it's important to note that in this case, it's actually, there's going to be more weak base being produced. That's going to go up because the ammonium ion will grab a hydrogen off. So the ammonium ion will donate a hydrogen to the water molecule and thereby become the hydronium ion and increase the amount of weak base we have. So this were our solution. Right? There was the competition between either chlorine grabbing a hydrogen off the water molecule or the ammonium giving one to the, the water molecule. What actually happened was the hydronium ion gave it. So it gave one. So it became NH3. So now it's a bit more NH3 than it was beforehand. But importantly, that extra hydrogen means that the actual H2O now is H3O plus. And the Cl minus, because it's such a weak conjugate base, did nothing, it stays. And what that means, now there's overall, beforehand it was H2O, which was neutral. Now there's a bit more of a hydronium ions. So there's a bit more P acidic hydronium ions than there were beforehand. And that means it's actually a bit acidic. The salt itself is a bit acidic. Or the solution itself is a bit acidic. That's why we call it the acidic salt. And on the opposite side, now we have hydrofluoric acid which is a weak acid, and potassium hydroxide, which is a strong base. Put them together, they form water, fluorine ions, and potassium ions. The weak acid has a weak conjugate base, but the strong base has a very weak, so this is a very weak conjugate acid, which means this potassium ion doesn't really like to do anything. It doesn't like to grab a hydrogen off the water molecule and return to become potassium hydroxide. That's very unlikely to happen. Whereas the other way around, it's more likely for the fluorine ion to grab a, a hydrogen, sorry, for the water to donate a hydrogen to the fluorine ion and for it to become hydrofluoric acid again. And what happens if that happens? Well, if that happens, we go from F minus plus H2O, and that will give us FH, uh, HF, so that's our hydrofluoric acid again. And because there's one less hydrogen in it, it will also give us our hydroxyl ions. And what do hydroxyl ions do? Well, they make the solution more basic. So in this case, it was the opposite of the other one. The other one, we had an increase of hydronium ions. In this case, we have an increase of hydroxyl ions. And that means this will increase but so will these hydroxyl ions. So again, this was solution here. We had a competition between fluorine ions and potassium ions. The potassium ions were very unlikely to grab a as to to give away anything, whereas the fluorine ions were much more likely to to in this case take. So what they did is they took one of the hydrogens away from a water molecule and put it onto the actual fluorine ion. And the fluorine then became again hydrofluoric acid. So that was the reverse of that reaction. But because we have these here now in our solution, these hydroxide, the solution itself is slightly basic. And that's why we call this a basic salt. So hopefully, I mean, this was the idea. The idea is if we have a strong, and, a strong acid and a weak base, then what happens is the solution itself will be slightly acidic because there's going to be a bit more of the reversible reaction happening, especially when it comes to the conjugate acid of the weak base grabbing and giving away a hydrogen 
to the water molecule, and the water molecule thereby becoming a hydronium ion, which means the acidic nature increases because there's more hydronium ions than there were beforehand. We said that this is what makes it acidic. Whereas it will be opposite if we have a weak acid and a strong base. And the reason being is because the conjugate base, sorry, the conjugate acid of potassium hydroxide, which is a potassium ion, is very weak, so it's not going to do anything. Whereas the weak acid's conjugate base, which is the fluorine ion, will be more likely to be active. So if the base is more active, the base grabs a hydrogen, and by doing so, it will turn the water into hydroxide ions. And that means the solution itself would be more basic, a bit more basic than it was beforehand. And therefore, we call it a basic salt. So you should know a strong acid plus weak base makes a acidic salt or acidic solution within that salt. And if we have a weak acid and a strong base, we call that a basic salt because if we put that together, the solution itself would be a bit more basic. Whereas if we have a strong acid and strong base, then we have complete neutralization occurring. So this is neutralization, it's complete neutralization. And that means that the salt itself will be, solution of the salt will be neutral. There will be no either hydronium ions floating around or hydroxide ions floating around. It's all going to be on water. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.